Welcome back to the Crypto Report. I am Crypto Kip, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about NFTs. What is an NFT, and what do you need to know? Before we jump into today's video, I want to make sure you guys are taking advantage of free money in the link down below. You can get a free $25 when you sign up for Crypto.com, a fantastic exchange. If you're not in there, I suggest checking it out, as well as make sure you're getting a free referral bonus when you sign up for Femex, which is an awesome leverage trading platform for all you leverage traders out there. Stay safe, all right? Now let's jump into the video. Let's talk about NFTs because they are clearly all the buzz. There is actually, Ukraine is distributing NFTs. There are celebrities like Melania Trump talking about NFTs. There's been so many people talking about NFTs. It's almost like every celebrity is releasing an NFT line, including musicians, artists alike. I'm sure you've heard of Beeple, one of the largest NFT artists selling multi-million dollar NFTs. But what the heck are they? We're going to dive in and we're going to take a little bit of a peek here and we're going to see... The definition. So, an NFT, definition of an NFT, it is a non-fungible token. I'm sure you already know that, but let's dive deeper. A unique digital identifier that cannot be copied, substituted, or subdivided, that is recorded on a blockchain, that, and that is used to certify authenticity and ownership as of a specific digital asset and specific rights relating to it. So basically, it's a unique image, piece of content, art, that is its own. It's similar to like a Bitcoin wallet. Let's say you have a Bitcoin wallet. It has its own private address. If you have an NFT and it gets minted, then it would be its own wallet address. Essentially, it would be its own unique item and no duplicate of it can ever be had in existence. So you might be wondering, well, Crypto Kip, what is minting? Well, I'm going to give you the definition of that as well. When you mint an NFT, you're essentially creating uh, a digital piece of art. You're converting a file to an NFT. So in simple terms, minting an NFT refers to converting digital files into crypto collections or digital assets stored on the blockchain. The digital items or files will be stored in a decentralized database or, uh, or distributed ledger and cannot be edited, modified, or deleted. So when you're minting an NFT, you have a lot of different places that you can actually mint an NFT. So you can mint NFTs on different platforms, actually. So there's a couple different platforms out there. Uh, one of them is OpenSea. OpenSea is coincidentally the largest NFT platform out there to date. It's where Beeple is selling and posting and minting his NFTs. It's where you can get your, your, uh, your ape NFTs, you can get crypto punks, you can get your board ape yacht clubs, you can get all these fancy NFTs that you've been hearing about. You can go explore and you can dive in and you can see some of the top collections like board ape yacht club, mutant ape yacht club, crypto punks. And as you know, ApeCoin just came out. And if you're holding the board ape yacht club or you're holding the mutant ape yacht club, well, then you just got some free ape coins. And if you sold them, then you made some money. If you're holding, well, Good luck to you. I hope they go to the moon. So uh, you can check out all the different NFT lines out here, but I want to make it very clear. When we're talking about NFTs, people kind of get it confused. Well, what is the value in this weird looking crypto punk? I mean, what the heck is it? It's this little weird red mohawk with these little stupid earrings and then these glasses and it's like a green zombie guy. And it's a, what is a board ape? Yeah, it's like some like sassy looking ape. I, like what is it? People get caught up on this. Now, those are valuable for their own reasons, and you can debate why or why not those are valuable. Clearly, a lot of people see value. But what you got to hone in on is there's more to NFTs than just an ape or a crypto punk. You can actually go in, and I'm sure you've heard of the metaverse, and the metaverse is essentially a digital world where you can go in and you can buy pieces of digital land. Well, where do you buy the digital land? You would buy the digital land on OpenSea. So Sandbox is one of the big metaverse spots and you can go and you can buy property in the metaverse so as you can see some of these properties and these plots of land it gives you the coordinates within sandbox and it gives you the price uh and here's something i want to point out when you're going in and you're buying an nft you have a couple different ways you can buy it you can buy it outright or you can do a bid which is indefinite or you can do a bid where it ends in seven days a day a week a month you can kind of set your time frame when you're a buyer and you're going in to buy an NFT, well, when you're bidding, honestly, there's a pretty low likelihood that you're going to be able to buy it if you're bidding. So if you're eager to buy, let's say, a plot of land in Sandbox, well, then you're going to want to make sure that 
you know, if you're bidding, you're bidding high, or if you're bidding, you're keeping an eye on your bid to make sure that when the auction ends that your bid is the winner. Uh, otherwise, if you're really, really eager and you want to go buy a plot of land in Sandbox or a CryptoPunk, well, then you want to make sure that you're looking for the outright price where you can just go ahead and just buy it at the just as a set price and you would just pay that agreed price and then you would go ahead and get that NFT. So why would you want to buy a NFT in Sandbox? Well, because then there's going to be people in this virtual world and now you can actually start to do advertisements in your virtual. Now that gets down a whole new road. I'm going to do a whole video on Sandbox and we're going to dive into the metaverse. But what we've gone over so far. So you can get a piece of digital art like a Board Ape Yacht Club or a CryptoPunk. Kind of neat. You can get a piece of art by a famous artist like Beeple. You can get a plot of land in Sandbox and you could advertise on that land. You're starting to see some of the functionality on this. And then you can also, for all you gamers out there, you can actually buy in-game items. So like, let's just say, and they're not doing this yet, but I hope one day they do. Like World of Warcraft, you go into a you go into a dungeon and you can win a legendary sword if you, you defeat the big boss in a dungeon, potentially, right? Well, what if there was games where they started having legendary items that were actually minted, right? And so they're rare because there's only one of them existence because this is a unique token and there's only, let's say, one. Or maybe they only create 10 of this legendary sword. Well, World of Warcraft's just an example that maybe you can latch on to, but... Here's an example of a game called Wizards and Dragons. So I'm not familiar with this game, but there's hundreds of games out there with these unique in-game items. This is just one small example. And you can actually see this is a treasure chest. This is minted as a, as a treasure chest, so there's only one of these treasure chests. These, these air runes, magic runes, you can buy all these runes. And so you can click into these and you can see how many are in existence and how unique they are. And then that would kind of hypothetically determine the value. You can buy a dragon whip, and then you can start to use these items in game. There's also other opportunities to utilize NFTs as um, artists. So let's just say, let's just say you were the creator of the Board Ape Yacht Club, and you just you're just an artist, and you created this collection. Well, now that these all sold, each time these Board Ape Yacht Clubs trade hands, there's going to be percentage that goes to the owner, well, the creator, should I say, of that Board Ape, and it would always you know, in existence continuously, every time it's resold, a cut of that sale will go to the original artist. That's one of the really cool things about NFTs is it really compensates artists for their work. And then they'll always get compensated because these NFTs then will be tied to their wallet. And each time a transaction would occur with that NFT, they would get their money for that item being sold, traded, uh, and moved around. That way, let's just say, for example, Kings of Leon came out and they produced an album and they minted it as an NFT. Every single time somebody plays that or every time somebody downloads that album, they are going to get compensated. And the only way to access that music, unless it's illegally downloaded, of course, would be through the NFT platform that they decided to mint it on. So we're looking at not only a future where digital artists that are creating really neat digital art are for the lifetime of that piece of art going to get compensated for it. But we're also looking at other types of art, like movie creators, like musicians, like game creators, right? Game developers. So really, this isn't just a bunch of silly pictures of a bunch of apes and turtles and crypto punks and dragons. And it's a lot more than that. And once you start to see past that, you really see that NFTs are going to be here for a while. Are you interested in NFTs? Do you want to buy an, an NFT today, tomorrow, next year, in five years? Leave a chat in the comment down below. Let us know what NFTs you're interested in. We might want to do a video on it for the future, but that's a 500-foot overview of NFTs. I hope it helped you guys out. I'm CryptoKip. This is the Crypto Report. Hoddle, baby!